And the most extraordinary thing to me was Jeremy Corbyn's resolute refusal to answer two simple questions. Should Hamas stay in power mm. and are they a terror group? He wouldn't do it. I mean, Len McCluskey answered both, but Corbyn was paralysed. He, he could not answer I know, those two it's... basic questions. But I'm afraid, as you know, uh, Piers, that's a character career trait of Jeremy Corbyn's. It was just the same with Sinn Féin IRA. Uh, he always seems to keep the door open to terror groups, whether they are anti-British terror groups like the IRA or anti-Israel groups like Hamas. I don't know why he feels this need. He's never been involved in any international peace negotiations anywhere, certainly never anywhere with any success, never anywhere with any prominence even. So it's always bizarre to hear him talking as if he's sort of been the UN Secretary General for the last 50 mm. years. And quite scary to think he was nearly potentially Prime Minister of his country. I mean, it does beg the question, if this had happened yes. to us, what would his reaction have been? If he's not able to say that Hamas, after oh. what they did on October the 7th, are a terrorist organisation, what would have happened if a terror organisation had killed 1,500 British people on our soil if he'd been running the country? Uh, absolutely. And, I, and I'd add to that, I mean, you know, he talks about the, the importance of clarity and, and being absolutely clear on things and is very unclear on things mm. himself. What he just said there about the Palestinians and Hamas and... I mean, they, he and Len McCluskey talk about Palestine, for instance. What do they mean by Palestine? Do they mean the West Bank? Do they mean the West Bank and Gaza? Do they mean the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem? Like, what is this state? Do they mean everything in pre-1948 or post-1948? They never say. They just talk about this non-existent state that mm. still doesn't exist because for decade after decade, people like them have supported the worst possible elements and have encouraged them in this delusion that Israel can be disappeared. It's not going to be disappeared. Mm. And yet this delusion is encouraged, among other things, among some people in the Palestinian leadership, which is why when they're offered 99% of a state, as they have been time and time again, they say no, because 99% mm. isn't 100%. Well, that clip I found of Bill Clinton from a few years ago was very telling, both in his description of of what Hamas do, which they're now doing, uh, and also in the fact that he had yeah. a, a great settlement there and Arafat yes. at the last minute screwed him, just walked away. Absolutely. Arafat walked away as, it, as his predecessors had walked away time and again. Uh, it, it could all be so different, you know. It could all be so different. Uh, just going back to what's happened in Gaza since the withdrawal, mm. you know, remember the Israelis left Gaza in 2005. It was extremely traumatic for the people of Israel because they saw members of their own army pulling forcibly Jewish families from their homes because they said that they would give Gaza over the Palestinians. There were elections. Hamas won the elections, killed their fatal rivals, and then never had another election. Mm. How can anyone defend this group or believe they're a legitimate government of Palestine? Mm. Uh, and the idea that they're any part... I tell you one thing, Piers, it's very, very obvious when you're here in the, in, in the period after the massacres mm. of October the 7th. It doesn't matter whether you're right-wing or left-wing. It doesn't matter whether you're a peacenik like many of the people who were murdered in the kibbutz or um, a, a supporter of Benjamin Netanyahu. Nobody in Israel believes that they can live beside Hamas. Mm. Nobody.